I missed out on a lot of great JRPGs growing up, but it's time to fix that. Let's talk about five JRPGs that I missed and I need to play. I love JRPGs, but honestly, it's impossible to play them all. Naturally, we're all gonna miss a JRPG or two. It's even worse that me myself, I didn't get into JRPGs until late in the PlayStation 1 lifespan. So I headed over to Twitter and Facebook and asked what are some must-play JRPGs? And these are some of the answers. So let's talk about 5 JRPGs I missed and I want to play. Who knows, maybe I'll review these games if I really enjoy them. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell. Now just a heads up, some of these games I've actually dabbled in a little bit, but honestly no more than 5-10 to 10 hours, so they're all pretty new to me. Anyways, that's enough talk. Let's get into 5 JRPGs I missed, but absolutely have to play. Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals Developed by Neverland and released for the Super Nintendo in 1996. If I had a nickel for every time I was told I need to play Lufia 2, I'd be able to quit my full-time job. Okay, not really, but I hear all the time about how Lufia 2 is one of the best games of all time. Actually, I reviewed the first Lufia quite some time ago, and while I wasn't terribly impressed with it, I'm told that Lufia 2 completely blows it out of the water. Now, I've played a tiny bit of Lufia 2, and by tiny bit, I mean I've gotten through the tutorial dungeon, so less than an hour in, and that's about it. But from what I gather, Lufia 2 has a neat battle system, the battle theme absolutely slaps, and the town music is just beautiful. Outside of that, all I know is that it's a prequel and you play as the four heroes that imprison the four Sinistrals from the first game, and it features a tool system similar to Wild Arms kinda makes me wonder if Wild Arms was inspired by this game. Anyways, Lufia 2 really intrigues me just because of all the hype that surrounds it. The idea of a game being considered the best game of all time from an incredibly high amount of sources, as well as never seeing anyone say anything negative about it, makes me think I missed out on something special. It's honestly hearing all the nostalgia from people about games like this that make me wish I got into JRPGs earlier. My experience might be a bit different, but from the little bit I played, I know it's going to be a fantastic journey and I'll love it all the same. Especially because retro RPGs really speak to me. And if this really is one of the best, I can't wait. I will be playing this game by the end of the year, and I really want to review it. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, well, you know what to do. Shadow Hearts, developed by Sacknoth and released for the PlayStation 2 in 2001. Shadow Hearts is another game that has been on my list for many years. I actually have this game sitting in my backlog, but I never got around to playing it. Though, I've seen many people talk about it. What interests me about Shadow Hearts? Well, Shadow Hearts covers the horror JRPG genre, which isn't touched upon all that often, and the Judgment Ring battle system seems really fun. Not to mention, it's another game that I hear gets almost universal praise. I love turn-based RPGs, and it's always nice when you get a nice little spin on things that prevents you from just mashing the accept button until that victory screen appears. From the videos I've seen of Shadow Hearts, I love the whole dark and demonic aesthetic, and how the main hero fits so well into said aesthetic. Transforming into demons, rescuing strange little girls, something to do with a graveyard, everything is just so dark and foreboding. It makes me incredibly curious where the story is going to go. Honestly, I wish that we got more horror-themed JRPGs. Too often do we get these fantasy, happy-go-lucky RPGs. Not to say they're bad, but I want RPGs like this that try to instill fear on you around every corner. Shin Megami Tensei is close-ish, but it isn't the same feeling that I'm looking for. Unfortunately, the only game that was somewhat horror-themed was going to be Penny Blood, but that's kind of in limbo currently. Another thing that I see all the time is that the sequel, Shadow Hearts Covenant, 
is on so many top PS2 RPG lists, so that's another thing that intrigues me. Though, I hear that Shadow Hearts from the New World kinda falls apart and is way too different from the rest of the games. What do you think of the Shadow Hearts series, and is this game, along with the rest of the series, worth playing? Alright, this one I know absolutely nothing about, but I do know of a certain Super Retro Force member that absolutely loves it. Speaking of which, you should totally go follow the Super Retro Force members in the description below. We're a great YouTube team that features all kinds of varied content. Anyways, Dark Cloud, developed by Level 5 and released for the PlayStation 2 in 2001. I've talked about Level 5 before. They were a juggernaut during the PlayStation 2 era and into the PlayStation 3. Releasing banger after banger, with this being said, I have full faith that Dark Cloud, and subsequently Dark Cloud 2, or Dark Chronicle if you're in Europe, need to be played. From my understanding, Dark Cloud is an action RPG, where you crawl through randomly generated dungeons to collect loot and fight monsters. I also hear that you have to rebuild the world similar to Legend of Mana? Correct me if I'm wrong there though. This seems interesting. I've never really been one for randomly generated dungeons, but I really like Dark Cloud's art style and the idea of rebuilding a world and seeing how it develops might prove to be a really fun experience. It's a bit of a shock that this is another game that I haven't played. I was all about level 5 growing up and somehow I missed this one. Oh, and just one more thing. This is actually a game that I plan on reviewing on the Super Retro Force channel, so if you don't want to miss that, be sure to hit them with a sub. The channel is in the description below. I've only mentioned Alundra like 50 times on this channel before. Alundra was developed by Matrix Software and released on the PlayStation 1 in 1998. This is kind of stretching the JRPG build a little bit. At first glance, Alundra might look like a Zelda clone with a dull and boring color palette, but honestly, Alundra is a lot of fun. Alundra is the game I've probably played most of on this whole list, but I've never managed to finish it myself. I really like Alundra. The concept of being a dreamweaver and invading people's dreams and incredibly difficult puzzles just speaks to me as a JRPG gamer. Puzzles are something that I really, really miss in JRPGs. They're rarely around anymore, and I just wish that they would come back. I understand that people don't care for puzzles because they can completely kill the progress of a game to a dead stop, but I miss dungeons having parts where you have to stop and think instead of just running through a bunch of rooms until you reach the end of a dungeon and fight the boss. They added a bit of uniqueness to dungeons and made you think. Alundra was also localized in North America by Working Designs. I've talked about this company before, they're one of my favorite localization companies out there. They always snuck in silly jokes that were very evident of 1990s pop culture. That's another reason I want to play Alundra. It's just fun to have JRPGs that don't take themselves seriously with ridiculous dialogue that makes fun of itself. Unfortunately, Alundra died with their sequel. It's not the worst game in the world, but Alundra 2 was just too different and felt really awkward to play. Anyways, I'll have to review Alundra at some point, because it's a really fun game and not enough people talk about it. Last but not least, Legend of the Gaia, developed by Procyon and Contrail, released for the PlayStation in 1999. Another game I've talked about, but I haven't finished. I'm just gonna out and say it, I wanna play this game because the battle system is so unique. Well, as unique as Xenogears. This is another game I've played a bit of, but haven't gotten all that far into. Despite the game having that jank early 3D PlayStation polygon look, and random encounters that are way more common than they need to be, the gameplay and the music fully redeem it. I love the whole combo system where putting certain button combinations together results in a special attack, as well as the music just being great. I've heard this as a recommendation from a lot of people as well. Some saying it's one of the best games available on the PlayStation. I did play its sequel, Lagaya 2, Dual Saga, on the PlayStation 2, and while I really enjoyed that one, I hear the first is in a whole other league. Legend of Lagaya just seems like a very nice game with a nice world to explore, and if what everyone says about it is true, I feel like I owe it to myself to play it at one point or another. What do you think about Legend of Lagaya? 
Is it any good, or should I toss it back into the abyss that is my never-ending backlog? So there you have it, five JRPGs that I just so happened to miss while growing up. Have you played any of these games, and what did you think about them? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, if there's a game that you feel needs to be experienced by anyone into JRPGs, throw that into the comments as well. I know I've missed a lot of JRPGs, and maybe you can help me out by letting me know which games I should play. Did you have fun with this video? Did you enjoy it? Maybe you want your YouTube homepage filled with JRPG content. If so, make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ding that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future JRPG videos. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro.